Good morning, fellow explorers. Thank you for joining us this morning. Hope your week was amazing. Mine was pretty good. Not, I have absolutely nothing to complain about, which is good since this is our weekly positivity pop-up. So if you're new here, fellow explorers, we like to start your week off with some fun, happy news because we just get bombarded with the ugly every day, day in, day out. This is your chance to have uh, some good, positive stories thrown at you to get your week started off on a good note. And also, I don't edit on Sundays. So if you're listening to this right now at 7.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, we are live. And this will be published wherever we publish our, wherever you listen to your podcasts, just as soon as the recording is over. So when you catch it later and you hear all of the awkward pauses and silences, just know that that is me. My name is Murr, and I don't edit on Sundays. So this is your weekly reminder of that. <laughs> so my week was good. I um, got to go out with my boyfriend and some friends last night. Got to hang out with my daughter Mackenzie while she was working and um, it was just a really nice time last night. Nice to see her. Nice to interact with her at work. But also, my favorite part of the evening was when some dude I didn't know came up to me. I guess he's a regular at the um, restaurant, bar and restaurant where my daughter works. And he came up to me to tell me how wonderful my daughter is. And that made me feel pretty good. As a parent, you always want, you always hope that your kids are doing good things. And it is always nice to have that, um, to have that, I don't know, solidified by somebody, somebody telling you, yeah, you actually did it. You did a good job with your kid. So that was nice. It's nice to hear. So we have a few stories for you this week. We have a few stories for you this week. We are going to start off by telling you about a teenage girl who took her, she, she was struck by tragedy. She, she was kind of, um, she wasn't a very outgoing girl. She's kind of shy and kept to herself. Um, she used books as a way to, as a, as her way to explore really. And since uh, back in 2019, her dad, who she considers her best friend, was diagnosed with stage four thyroid cancer. And then the next year, there was, of course, the uh, pandemic. And this this young lady um, would take care of her dad um, at their, at, you know, at home, trying to help out in the family restaurant. This this young lady's name is Emily Batnagar. So she would try to help take care of her father, help work at the restaurant, and she just needed a way to sort of give back because she was feeling pretty low watching her dad suffer. And um, she decided that since she loved books so much and she found so much solace in books that she would grab as many books as she can from people who would be willing to donate them to her. And she would donate them to children's hospitals in the area. So this started back in 2019 again, and she has donated over 15,000 books and this has been in just a short four years. So actually, this article was written and says almost two years following the first book drive, she's donated about 15,000 books to local hospitals in the Washington, D.C. area, including Children's National Hospital, Children's Inn at NIH, 
Holy Cross Hospital and Innova LJ Murphy Children's Hospital. So nice job, Emily. That's I'm sure that your parents are super proud of you as well. My next story I have for you is the global global happiness has been remarkably resilient over the past three years, which is pretty amazing considering everything that we've been through. But in the the 2023 World Happiness Report, that trend is 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 strong, despite a major war in Europe and all the government shutdowns and totalitarian policy measures and front of the largest pandemic in 100 years, happiness ratings have remained much the same across Europe and elsewhere. So the report is a publication of the UN Sustainable Development Solutions Network, and it uses the Gallup World Poll data from 150 nations. They look at things like a sense of social support and positive feelings towards others to rank order countries on reported happiness. So this may not um, come as a large surprise to anyone, but for the sixth year in a row, Finland occupies the top top spot on the index. Denmark retains its position in second place. Israel moved up the most from the ninth position in 2022 to fourth position in 2023. And amazingly enough, neither Russia nor Ukraine dropped in the report. So I thought that was a really cool article about how we as people just are are pretty resilient and um, we continue to choose happiness. So way to go. Way to go, us. Good job, humanity. All right. My next story, which, by the way... Um, I had been planning to report on this. I planned to report on it last week, ran out of time, so I'm going to report on it today. And on my way home this morning to start the positivity pop-up, this news story was covered on NPR. So basically, this show, the positivity pop-up that you're listening to right now, is as good as NPR. So let me take that to the bank. (laughs) So there are two U.S. high schoolers who believe they have found a way to prove the Pythagorean theorem through using trigonometry. Now, let me stop for just a minute so that you understand something about me. I love math. Numbers make sense to me. Don't really remember trigonometry. And the only thing I know about the Pythagorean theorem is that a squared plus B squared equals C squared or something like that. I don't know. Oh, yeah, that's, that's the formula. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. See, I do know a little bit of something. Um, I What I didn't know until reading this article, though, is that the Pythagorean theorem is something that's just really, it, it's understood that it works, but it's not ever been proven so these two high school kids, um, they they met with the American Mathematical Society in Georgia last week. These two these two young women. Um, let's see if I can find their names. Jackson and Johnson, Calcia Johnson and Nakia Jackson. So they were able to present their findings at this mathematical conference this this past week. And when I was listening to them this morning on NPR, they they were describing um, mathematicians, listening to them, taking notes, making connections, and made them feel pretty excited. And They have been um, told that they should submit their findings for peer review, which is a a way to conduct research. So, you know, something that we've been, this is an equation that we've been working with for, you know, a lifetime, many lifetimes, has now been proven by a couple of kids here in the United States, a couple of females, and that's pretty exciting for all of my math nerds out there. 
And of course, I say that in the most loving way. (laughs) So this story, my next story, comes from my local um, station here in Cincinnati. It's my local Fox station. So a little girl with a rare condition, she arrives in Cincinnati for a life-changing procedure. So this little girl is from California, and she has a rare birth defect that um, causes her to not be able to breathe on her own, nor can she eat on her own. So... Sorry, my headphones did something a little wacky, so I'm just moving things around. Sorry about that. So she has a trach that she uses for breathing, and her parents have to, like, manually clear her throat. She's two years old. She's from Orange County, California. She spent two months in the NICU before she received her diagnosis of congenital bilateral vocal cord paralysis. And there is a surgery that that can be done. It's only performed by a few people in the country. And I am fortunate enough to live in a city where one of those um, surgeons also works here at the Cincinnati Children's Medical Center. Um, I, I have children that see doctors at Cincinnati Children's and we couldn't be more blessed to have this incredible facility so close to us. But for but for this young lady, she, to make the trip from Orange County, California to here in Cincinnati, with all of the equipment and everything she would have needed, she did need to get here, the flight would have cost them around $25,000. That's a lot of money. But through an organization, called Aero Angel, A-E-R-O, the flight was completely covered through donations and things like that. So this little girl has a chance to live a normal life thanks to a bunch of incredible people who helped get her here and, of course, our doctors here in Cincinnati that are hopefully going to make a world of difference for this young lady. My very last story that I have for you comes to us from MIT. So we have, this is very difficult to describe um, because you're listening to me, but this is the Cook Institute Image Awards. They recognize the extraordinary visuals produced by biomedical research at MIT. And every year, 10 images are selected for display in the Cook Institute Public Galleries. So there, I'm going to put a a link in the description of this episode once it's published. These pictures that were taken of biomedical (laughs) research, it's just amazing. These are pictures from a microscope, um, from multiple microscopes. We have... um, we have a picture of monitoring disease associated immune activity. We have a germ cell development in the fruit fly. We have enhanced mucosal delivery to improve immune protection. There are just uh, these crazy images of cells and things happening inside of our body that have to be shared with the world. So I am going to put a link in the description of this episode so that you have the pleasure of seeing them for yourself. All right. So today, well, it's April 2nd, and the month of April marks the month here in the United States anyway, where we celebrate the earth. It's, it's earth month. So I want to leave all of you this week with a challenge to join the sirens um, of Siren Soapbox in this eco challenge that we're all a part of. You can sign up to be on the Siren Soapbox team. The password for our team is explore2020 with an exclamation point at the end. 
And oh, wait, that's not right. It's Explore 2023 with an exclamation point at the end. And the Explore, the E is capital. I'll put all that in the show notes as well. But we would love to have you join our team. Anybody who joins the Siren Soapbox team is going to get some Siren Soapbox swag. That could be stickers. It could be postcards, whatever we have on hand. Um, Our team has 88 points right now. And if anybody listens to Siren Soapbox as well as this positivity pop-up, you may know that Siren LC is quite competitive and she fully expects our team to win first place. So let's help her make that happen by joining this challenge and signing up to do some really cool things to help Mother Earth. And for every activity you complete, you're awarded points. So let's see... uh, Let's see what we can do. Let's see what we can do together to help fulfill Elsie's dream of being the first place team. <laughs> and of course, this positivity pop up would not, we couldn't end it without a few corny jokes. So here are a few for you. What did the horse say after it tripped? Help. I've fallen and I can't giddy up. (laughs) Okay, I have another one. Hold on. I I have I have to I can't I can't do more things multiple things at once, people. Calm down. I'm I'm looking up some trivia because Elsie will be sad if we don't have trivia. Okay. Why can't you hear a pterodactyl going to the bathroom? Because the P is silent. (laughs) <laughs> oh okay one more what do you call a well-balanced horse stable <laughs> i thought i was done and then i read this one what do you call an angry carrot a steamed veggie <laughs> oh my gosh i cracked myself up all right and of course some earth day trivia for you for our fellow explorers and we'll put the link to this trivia in so here's the first question who is credited with founding earth day the answer is gaylord nelson and the founder of earth day is a senator from which state that state would be Wisconsin. When is Earth Day? I know that Mark knows this because he told us last or a couple of days ago, but Earth Day is April 22nd. And I know that because it's the day after my birthday. Next question. Earth Day's date was chosen because it falls between which two events on college campuses? That, of course, would be spring break and final exams, which means people, we're getting close to the end of the semester. When was the first Earth Day? It's been around longer than me, I can tell you that was founded in 1970. And how many people recognized the very first Earth Day on April 22nd in 1970? That number is 20 million. Let's see if I can get one more good question in here. What region on Earth produces 20% of the planet's oxygen. One fifth, that's a lot. Well, that of course would be the Amazon rainforest. All right, friends, that is all I have for you today. I am so happy that you spent your time with us. If you're if you're looking for a, a new podcast to listen to and you haven't heard of Siren Soapbox yet, I highly suggest you check it out. I know LC and I are planning to record a new episode of Siren Song next week. So that'll be up on our Patreon for for our subscribers. And I hope you enjoyed today's positivity pop-up. Can't wait to talk to you again. And until next time, dive in, stay curious, and be happy.